Hi everyone. Um, I'll be starting in about five minutes with this Facebook Live. And uh, hi Trish, it's good to see you. How are things back there in Kentucky? Hi Ruthie, oh, it's good to see you too. We're going to be doing um, a Zoom paper pumpkin party on the uh, 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. And so if you guys are interested in joining me, just let me know. Yes, I'm enjoying seeing the pictures of that new great-grandbaby, Trish. Yep. There's something really special about those babies. How big was he? Or she. Wonderful, Ruthie. I'll be sure to make make sure that you uh, get an invite. Well, that's a nice size, though. Was it a boy or a girl, Trish? Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's really nice and snuggly, though, I bet. Well, let's get started. It's 3 o'clock, and I want to welcome those who join me after the video has been recorded. Um, welcome to Trish and to Ruthie, who are online live right now, and to anybody else who joins during this um, doing this uh, videotaping. So I'm going to be showing how to use All Things Fabulous. It's a wonderful stamp set. And uh, so I'm going to turn the camera down and uh, let's get started. I think I'm beginning to get the hang of getting this turned around. So the stamp set that I'm featuring today is the All Things Fabulous. It has a ton of stamps in it. Some very small ones and some bigger ones. And it, to me it was rather confusing. Um, after looking at it and watching a couple of videos, I discovered that, the co uh, that here on the cover, the stamps, it's a three set stamp set. And a three, a three stamp um, set. And so this stamp and this and these two go together. These two go together. These three go together. These three go together. And then these little ones I noticed were co um, coordinated also uh, in here. So to help me see it better, I circled them. But it was still a little confusing to me. So I created, it goes along with the dies to cut out the various parts. And again, we have quite a few dies. We have some leaf dies, these three are leaf dies. Then we've got duplicates of the rest of these small dies. And then these are the dies that cut out the whole flower and a wonderful lattice type die. So this is this is all part of the bundle, the die, the dies and this. And I wholeheartedly urge you to get both. So we'll set those aside. I created this chart so that I could see. Um, another point that I wanted to make is if you look on the index on the back, there are some very tiny 
very tiny numbers, like 7B, and then there's a little carrot showing an arrow, as an arrow, showing which direction you're supposed to stamp them. And I didn't know they were there. Um, at first, somebody mentioned them, and I went, really? And I had to actually get a magnifying glass to be able to see them. Now, I can read them, now that I know they're there, and I can read them if I have the light kind of reflecting off the sheet. So I decided to make this cheat sheet. And I have each of the stamps that are stamped out. And I wrote 1A, 1B, 1C. And the direction that they are supposed to be stamped. Same thing for 2A, 2B, 2C, 3A, 3B, and 3C. But notice that on the threes, the arrows go that direction. Then the smaller stamps, there's 4A, 4B, and 4C. I originally thought that the 4A were leaves that went on the stem, and this was the flower. However, I stamped it that way once, and it did not look right. Let me show you what I had. Okay, where'd it go? It was like this. And I thought, oh, that just doesn't fit right. Then it dawned on me that you actually stamp these are your petals, and then this is a kind of the center of the flower in here. So you use two different colors, or stamp off one, and uh, one time, and then ink it up, and then the stem. I went to cut out this one, and it does not fit the die quite right. Because the stem goes a whole lot curved more. Can you see how it should be? I did that twice. And the stem needs to be curved more to the left. This one was a little bit better, but it still is not enough to be cut out. Just a little hint for you. I did better on the ones that have the three the petals type things. So I was able to get that right. But these two, they curve to the left more than what they are. And as you can see, I practiced with a lot of, lots of times um, with using different color combinations. And I made a chart with my favorite color combinations and pictures showing. Even here, I did not get that curved quite enough. But I just love the little flowers. I think they are so cool. And the dies do have to be directed uh, in a certain direction. I tried to place these dies so that they would correspond with the stamps. Tried to place them as they would be placed on the image. Down here, I didn't really try that hard with them because I thought that they would be more um, apparent as you stamp it. I keep this cheat sheet right beside my works area because when I'm stamping, I have to look to see, okay, which way does this go? Now, I made a card like this using some of the small stamps flower stamps in the background, and I used um, from the um, Forever Ferns, I used this stipple um, stamp to put some more background in there, and then this is one of the um, styles of flowers. I used this series to make these two flowers. So this is one card I made. This would be a little more time consuming. My watch is answering me. So this um, would be a little more time consuming than to have on a video. So I'm making instead, we're going to make this card. 
less, a little bit less stamping to it. To make this card, I have an eight and a half by five and a half sheet of purple posy cardstock for the base. That was not folded accurately. I'll have to trim that down. Didn't get quite right. I have cut out the lattice die from Pear Pizzazz cardstock. And I wanted a background. So this is from the, is one of the designs from the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. And I like to cut samples of all of this and put it on the cardboard backing so that I can see without having to flip through each page what is available. So I chose this one to put on the back. And I cut it out with the largest largest die of the stitch so sweetly die set with that rect with the rectangle also need a scrap of whisper white cardstock and a five inch length of this beautiful gold edged ribbon which is part of the all of the trimmings ribbon combo pack in the holiday catalog it has this color and then it has a red with it and then I'm using these two rhinestones because of the purple going so perfectly with the gorgeous grape color um, I'm using from the retired um, Noble Peacock rhinestones. I'm cheating on that. Sorry, you guys. But you could take a, just a regular rhinestone and color it with the gorgeous grape uh, Stampin' uh, Blend, the dark one, and you could get the same process, uh, approximately the same color. So we'll go ahead and mount. these two parts could use glue dots on this to put this one on like that. And then I stamped this greeting. I'm here for you using gorgeous grape. And I hope I can get it straight. One of the things I love about the photopolymer stamps is the fact that you can see where you're stamping it. And you can tell if you're getting it lined up properly. Okay, now we'll go to work on the flower. I'll show you how to stamp it. So I have the three pieces laid out onto blocks. And I have my cheat sheet right here. Originally, I stamped this one using Purple Posy ink pad, only to remember that, oh, we don't carry that any longer because they were having technical problems with the color staying good. I happened to have it, so I was using it. But you can work around that by stamping off the first for the first color. And I checked to make sure I've got it lined up the way 
oh, stamp off, and then stamp it again. And I think I have the wrong color. I have gorgeous grape. We will try that again. And with the with the lighter color. Still have some of these. Or they're hard to open for me. Mm, come on. Should have opened it up earlier. There we go. Okay, we'll try that again. Stamp it off and stamp it again. There. Okay, then I'm going to use this again. The, this is Heather, Highland Heather, and check with my diagram to make sure I've got the stamp the right direction. Like that. And then kind of use the holes to match up with each other. Did you see that? You saw that. Oh, that wasn't very good. Let's try that again. Stamp off once. Stamp again. Okay. Let's see if I can line that up better. Yeah, a little bit better. And then the third one, make sure it's lined up right. Like that. Now I have one that I have already done and cut out to save time to put on our card. And I got the alignment a little bit better, I think. So we'll put this aside. I'm going to use a glue dot to put this on. Uh, not a glue dot, Stampin' Dimensional. And to save time, I have stamped and cut out two of the leaves using, because this pear pizzazz, I used the mossy metal. Yeah. Yeah, mossy metal. I get that mixed up with um, a previous color that had moss or something in it. I'm going to put these on with glue dots. Kind of took them underneath the flower. And then this piece of ribbon, I'm going to fold in half. I'm going to put a glue dot 
near the top of it. Glue dot the other way. There. And now the glue dot, and we'll stick this down underneath. I think I'll stick one of those a glue dot to hold this one so it doesn't pop up so much. And then the final touch is a little bit of bling using this peacock. noble peacock rhinestones. Can't believe I still have them. I should have used them all up last year. to be sure that you have pressed down and that you're picking up the glue as well as the rhinestone. There. Come on. And there you have it. A relatively quick card, especially if you already have everything pre-cut. So thank you for watching. Um, if you want, need to order the supplies, my online store is Creations by Sue, Stampin' Up.net. And uh, my blog is www.soggystamper.com. I will be posting, I think I already have posted, this on my blog so you might check my blog to see because it was titled um, fabulous uh, or uh, all things fabulous bundle I think is the title of the thing and um, you can check out this video at the later time if, at your convenience on my soggy stamper uh, Facebook or not Facebook YouTube channel just the soggy stamper uh, YouTube channel so thank you so much for watching and this was a little bit shorter, hopefully, um, so that I didn't get people bored uh, watching my video. Thank you for those who are watching, and leave a comment. I appreciate that. I'll get back to you as soon as I can on the comments. It's a little difficult for me to see the comments and do the procedure. So have a good afternoon, and I'll be back next Friday at 3 o'clock with another wonderful uh FaceTime live with a different stamp set. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.